everybody, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Camilla. I'm Roy Kenning. I'm Z Garcia. And today we're going to Japan. Let's go. Yes. It says, let's go to Japan. Let's this is a game it, from Josh Wood, who probably is best known for Cat Lady. Mm. Although, he did a game that did not get a lot of love uh, from AEG2, where you went to the pier. What was that game called? Um, the board? Santa Monica? Santa Monica, that's, yeah. That's, that's his game also, okay. Yeah, and okay. you can actually, if you play that one, you can see a bit of that in here. Oh, okay. Mm. I have not played that. Um, but let's go to Japan. Now, this is a Kickstarter from AEG, and I just want to give you a heads up that the version you're going to see is a super deluxe version because... I haven't even seen the other version, so keep that in mind. But here's how it plays. In Let's Go to Japan, players are going to be traveling six days through Japan. And they're going to be doing that through a series of turns in which you're going to be drafting cards. There's going to be a board here in the middle of the table which tells you how to draft. So there's two decks of cards, Kyoto and Tokyo. And so on turn one, you're going to draw a card from each deck. You're going to play one card and then pass one card to the board of the person clockwise from you. And you'll do that four turns in a row. Then on the next, on the fifth turn, you'll pick up those four cards and play two of those and pass two. Then you'll draw two cards from each deck doing this. And you'll go through the game doing that. Although at this turn here, you will start passing in the other direction. Now when you play cards, you're going to take these cards from the top of a deck and you're going to look at the cards in your hand and you're going to play them under one of the days of the week. Each day of the week can have up to three cards placed on it and you can put them in any order you want. Essentially, what I mean by that is when you play a card, you can stick it on the back, in between, or in front of the cards that are there. Now, as you're playing cards, if you don't like the cards you get, you can always discard a card to the discard pile, then draw the top card from either deck and just put it in a spot and say, I'm just going for a walk. Now, as the game progresses and you finish putting the third card in one of these slots, then you're going to see if you get a bonus. At the beginning of the game, these tokens are randomly placed here. Everyone has them in the same spots. But here on Wednesday, for example, it shows the pink flower. And if I, I have two of those symbols there, so I can take either the bonus here underneath two or the bonus under one. There are three different kinds of bonuses that you have here. This bonus just lets you move your morale up one. Morale is important over the course of this game because if you ever get to this spot or this spot, the corresponding track will move one and you reset it. And at the end of the game, these will give you negative points. These will give you positive points. You can also get these tokens, which you can discard to draw three more cards when you're drafting and you have more of a choice to pick from, and then you discard three or one point at the end of the game. You can get luxury train tokens, or you can get these wild tokens. And all this stuff comes from here. There's even a spot to play a fourth card, an extra walk card, on one of your days. The game will end when the cards are in all the different slots. You'll have three cards or possibly a fourth card in all the different areas. At that point, you're going to need to use your trains. Everyone has one starting train, and as the game progresses, you will have gotten luxury trains, but you're going to need to use a train every time you switch cities from Tokyo to Kyoto. Now, so here, I'm in Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo. I go to Kyoto, so I need a train there. Kyoto, 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 Kyoto. Now back to Tokyo. So I can use one of my luxury trains there. For each time you need to switch and you don't have a, one of these tokens, then you're going to put a negative two point token there. And at the end of the game, luxury train tokens will score you two points and these will score you minus two points. Some of the cards in the deck have tan and these will count for either city for purposes of switching back and forth like this. After you do that, you will then score each of your days. So when you look here, for example, at Monday, we'll look at the top corner. This says move the blue marker up one, move the green marker up three, move my morale back one, or move it forward one, then back one. So all that stuff happens here. Then on your final card, this is your destination for that day, this says eat the best meal of your life. That says if my green token here, the restaurant token, is at four or higher, then I will get three points and move my blue token three. Unfortunately, it's only at three, but ha ha ha, I saved one of these. So I'll spend that to move it up there. So now I'm going to score for this day. 
So I'm going to get three points, two points, one point, an extra three points, and then move this up three. I then go to Tuesday. The green marker moves up again. The blue marker moves up two. The morale moves back forward two. And this says, if I experience it all, one of each token, I get 10. Well, that one I did not do, and I don't have enough tokens to do that. But that is essentially what you're going to do. You're going to score for each day. If you get to let's take a walk card, when you get there, you'll turn it over. You'll see what it is because you haven't seen it to that point. You can decide to keep this card or just leave it on the let's go for a walk, which gives you some morale and also some victory points. So you can do choose that. And all these cards are different. There's some cards that are similar or might do the same thing. And whoever has the most points is going to win. You're getting points from each day. You'll get points for your morale. You'll get points from train tickets and stuff. And then finally, however far these tokens are, you can get 4, 8, 12, or 15 points from them. Most points is the winner. One thing I didn't show you in the Super Deluxe version, although we do have it, is the extra box of porcelain bowls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're very beautiful. They're very they pretty. Really They're very are. optional. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, although I would... And I've seen the tokens for this game. I really like the wooden pieces. Yeah, they're really nice. Mm -hmm. But taking that out, I think the art and the theming here, mm -hmm. this is not a, a thematic game per se. It is just a put cards down, score points. I don't know that I agree with that necessarily. I don't know. What I mean is you're moving tracks. I, 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 what I mean is... If I taught you this game without the Let's Go to Japan, you could understand it. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. I don't need to use the theme to teach the game. Right. I think the theme is secondary in the game. I think the first time you play it, you don't get a theme. It's very mechanisms. You're just moving the cards. You're just going through. You're trying to set an engine. Hmm. Um, I, I don't think. But I think the more you become familiar with those mechanisms, then you start seeing like, oh, I get it now. This card does this because I visited this shop, something like that. So I think this the... The theme is like a second wave kind of experience. Well, I'm going to disagree on that because I think why I said you don't, the, the theme was you can add the theme to the game. I think the theme is so powerful in this game, one wow. of the most thematic wow. style games I've played in a long time. I, say, I Got agree zero more with theme that. I've, I've, I've watched so many play. travel vlogs from Japan. I've watched so many like planning videos on like how to go and, and, and Are you going to all Japan? That I'm planning on going to oh, Japan. Okay, well, you know? well, this so, is a prep game for so, you. So, yeah, I, I, I literally took this home to play with my fiance because I was like, hey, this is going to be kind of like we can see all these different things. And it's it's cool to see, like, oh, yeah, I know that town. Oh, I've seen this sort of thing. I do this sort of thing. And it's really cool to see how you set everything up because, I mean, everybody goes to Japan a lot of times during certain seasons to see the, cho the, the sakura blossoms. That's like, that's part of your week, you know? It's like, oh, going to eat sushi. Oh, going to shopping. Oh, going to, to visit the temples. It's, it's really cool to see all that stuff shown in the game. And it really feels to me very very thematic as far as like planning out the trip before you even go, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, that part I think is hilarious because people sit there and go, oh, I'm trying to fit Thursday together in this. I'm like, that's what that's exactly planning a trip is like. what it would be like. <laughs> you know? You're like, oh, I guess on Thursday we're just going to go for a walk. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's, that's yeah. the way trips can be. Now, they add a flavor to the cards, which is very nice. Then again, it kind of works on multiple levels where you can... You can gloss over the flavor text and match symbols and make the game work for you if that's where your headspace is at. Or you can ease into the theme and read the flavor text and understand why the symbols are where they are, and then you let it kind of work on you. So I agree. I think it's very thematic. I also think if you are not a big Japan Japan file, is that a thing? Um <laughs> If you are not into this theme, if you don't care for thematic games, I also think you can kind of gloss over that. Mm. That I agree on. I think you could ignore it. I do want to say again, what I said at the beginning, this is the deluxe version. Man, do I like this deluxe version. Oh, yeah. I like mm -hmm. everything about this set, from the bags the stuff comes into the card quality to the art. Mm -hmm. It's just great. I like that it comes with the bags. I think that was a really cool touch that you don't have to have the plastic bags in there that it comes with the different ones to organize the cards. And you talked earlier about the porcelain bowls, how they're in their separate box. I, I, I think they're completely unnecessary in the game, but they're a really nice touch really that are. really yeah. fit the whole theme and the experience that it's building. But they're also nice enough 
and I don't want to say generic enough because, again, they very much fit this, but I would use them in other games. I could see myself not needing to keep them in this box, and they just stay over there at my Calyx, right beside my other porcelain ones and my wooden ones, that if I need that size bowl, those are what I pull out. Mm -hmm. I think that they are very versatile in that. They, they fit the game very well, but maintain that versatility where you can use them in other ones. So gameplay. This is one of those games that almost takes as long to score as it does to play. Not quite. Well, mm -hmm. your first game it will. But after that, I mean, mm -hmm. you'll score pretty quickly and figure out how the game works. But it definitely is a, we're drafting, 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 placing cards, kind of ignoring what everyone else does. There's almost no interaction in the game other than the stuff you draft. But this is definitely, in my opinion, and I might be wrong on this, a game where hate drafting almost doesn't exist. I was going to say, this is, this is one of the times where... In a drafting game, you're usually trying to see what you need and that kind of stuff, but keeping an eye on your neighbors as well. I did not do this a single time in this game. I, I don't want to say I didn't care, but it was very much like, I need this card for my efficiency and for my week and for my symbols to line up. So maybe I'm giving you a 13-point card. I don't care because I don't want it. I played this two players as well, and it's all, almost interesting because you can almost, I mean, if you're playing with that lower player count, you can almost do like hate giving, where it's like, I really don't want to play this, you play that card. But then they can just give it right back to you. You can have the same card bounce back and forth. It just kind I of interesting. I've played this two players, so you bounce back and forth. Yeah, then? so because you're playing two players, you're going to draw cards, you're going to be giving the other player cards, and then they're going to draw cards, and they could give you that card back. And it's like, well, maybe I can make this fit. And the fact that you can do any card as a walk means that even if they give you a card that you don't like, you're like, well, you know what, I'm just going to make it relaxing and make it a walk instead. You know, so it's, it still doesn't feel like you're trying to hurt other people at all. Right. But um, there is a thing where it's like, well, that card is really expensive. It's going to make my morale go down a bunch. You have that card. Uh, I don't really want to play that one either. You have it back. You know, that could happen a little bit, but it's not bad at all because you can always still use the card. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, um, I don't know, I lost my thought. The walking. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think the walking is interesting because it adds a little bit of guess. Whenever you walk, you discard a card, draw the top card from the deck, and put it down. I don't know what's on the other side of that card. It might be amazing. It might not work. Mm -hmm. But it also has that fail-safe, it could be a walk. Yeah, so that's, that's an interesting say. rule. That's a weird rule, I thought. This idea of, and I guess, again, you can buy into it thematically. Mm -hmm. I planned on walking, but we came across something on the walk. You know yes, that I mean? is exactly... Mm -hmm. I think the theming of it, right. But it's neat. They do, I mean, it's a, it's a weird idea. Normally in many drafting games you can sort of take a this is a bust card, face mm -hmm. down thing, whatever. But you don't normally get to like check it at the end of the game and go like, oh, 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 yeah, no, that's what I meant. That's a weird rule. It's an interesting rule, but it is a weird rule. Well, the, the, the drafting is to preparing a trip, then the week is you actually going on the right. trip. Yep. So you say, we're walking here, let's see what we can find. Mm-hmm. And then you find it, you're like, yeah. nah, place too expensive. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Another well, aspect I sense. thought was super interesting was the uh, the train tickets and having to go back and forth in between the two cities. And like the fact of like I have pink cards from uh, from uh, Tokyo, or no, the pink cards are Kyoto, and the the blue cards from uh, Tokyo. And like figuring out how to line those up properly, and figuring out how much you need to value like staying in one uh, city versus the other, or do you just want to be able to combo your stuff together? But then you're gonna have to figure out how to get those train tickets so that you don't have a bunch of negative points. That's yeah. just an interesting aspect that to me felt extremely thematic as well at the same time yeah so overall I, I think this game it's not particularly hard to teach you teach by showing I've taught mm. it many times now um, and it's not hard to play but you will find your way to optimize it as time goes right. by the bonuses give you some focus I want to play these cards and these columns and they also stop people from building the perfect route mm -hmm. yes or at least I think they, they fight against that because otherwise you'll just build backwards now, the way the bonuses work where you get them in-game, I really like. Mm. That you complete, you play your three cards or whatever it is, and bam, you get the train right now, or you get the bonus right, whatever it may be. It's like, great. Because you got to be able to do that stuff in-game to help you plan. If I had to visualize that stuff also for the end of the week, that would be too much. Um, the one thing I thought was a little messier than it needed to be maybe was the drafting mode in which you go you know across the however many times you draft 15 or whatever where you do the whole like in this round take two pick two keep one pass one and one then the next round you pick these take one and one 
It, yeah. It's like, it changes like five, four times. Mm -hmm. It changes direction and the so, number of cards. Yeah, I thought it was a little more yeah. than it needed to do. So Ooh, for me, I didn't think it was bad. I just feel like if you're teaching this game, you shouldn't explain that at all. You I should agree. Just, you should just literally say, okay, here it is. I'm just gonna tell you how this round works. Now I'll tell you how this round works. Now I'll tell you how this round works. So if you get it all up front, it's like, holy smokes, that's information overload. Yeah. So uh, if you're just doing it as it happens, then it's actually really simple. Yeah, and I will give the game credit. I think it does have a, a very clear and clean uh, track, not track, I guess, mm -hmm. round tracker for yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. That is very clear. Because I was the same, same way. It was like, what are we doing and why does this really matter? You know, it's like, okay, I guess that's what we're doing this turn. Um, but I, I do think it's necessary and well thought out that they have that tracker yeah. to track it no, for you with clear symbology. It explains to you what you need to do. Right. It just but also feels again, like a bit of why? a, you know, oh, I'm keeping two and you gave me two. Like, this, how different would this be really if I just grabbed four cards or three cards and took one, threw everything away, grabbed three again, kept one, grabbed three again, kept one. I don't think it would be that different. This looks like Oh, it's deep and strategic, and the card you pass matters, yeah. and the one you take back, and the one you save. I'm like, yeah, kind of, kind of. I think it's trying to force that kind of player interaction, because like we were saying, I'm not really looking at your board, kind of, oh, look at your board, because now you're passing to that person, so make sure you're keeping an eye on them. But contrary to that, you know what we said earlier, it doesn't really matter. I'm taking the card that's best for me in this game anyway. Maybe once so, you get good, you'll do that more. Oh, thanks. Mm. No, I meant <laughs> a player. Once a player gets okay, good. good. Okay, good, good. No, I meant the same thing for me. Sorry. The, I think the game, I like everything the, structurally about the game. There is one sticking point for me, and that's the, the walking symbol and those walking tokens. I know why they exist, but it, it's, it's, everyone's like, this gives me a walking token. We get a fourth card, and the walking tokens to put on the card. When you flip it over, you should remember that it was a walk. And that only matters for some cards that do walk. I would have cut that out of the game completely yeah. because it's the one pain in the neck to teach people. Yeah, I definitely kept getting hung up on those two symbols being the same but meaning different things. Basically. Yeah, right. If you take a walk, it means add a fourth card. Or, I mean, if you do the bonus. If you do the bonus, you get the fourth card. But if those walking symbols appear on cards, it matters for things later on. Triggering other cards. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's just a pain. And even it's, a, it's slightly less pain to teach the two morales like there's you you lose and gain morale based on money or stress right and people are like what's the difference I'm like well it while you're moving it there is no difference it only matters for, for those symbols. Yeah. symbols not a big deal but it just makes it a little less newcomer friendly i do like that morale track that's yeah. good well how it resets to though yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. oh i've spent so much money Okay, well, today's a new day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. interesting. What would you give it? Um, I'm going to come down to an eight on this one. I did enjoy it. Um, I think it has a really nice cadence to it. It's a very pleasing game. I wouldn't put it quite in that cozy category. It's a little, little bit more mm. of a thinker mm. than that, but it is a very pleasing game to play. I enjoy the organizational aspect of it. I love drafting games. Um, it's one of my favorite mechanisms. I, I think it's it's one that, I, and I know you know we disagree on this, for me, the theme comes later in it. It's very mechanisms up front mm -hmm. uh, to understand. It's just symbol matching and you know trying to maximize your, your little engine here. But then later, as you get more comfortable with it and you start to see that come out, and that's very uh, pleasing. I'm going to keep using that, that, that word for it. It's a very pleasing game. Yeah, this is a weird one for me because I, 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 my rating is an 8. And I keep on like, well, I listen to myself talk well, about it. I thought it. you were going to go higher than and that. And it sounds like I'm much higher on it. Yeah. And, and you know what? There's two things. One, I think it's going to move higher. We'll see as the year goes by. I really, I like this game a lot. I mean, an 8 is a very high rating anyway. Um, if, if I went by how much I'm going to teach other people this game, it would be a 10. You know, this is a game I, I'm going to have fun just bringing out and teaching people. Mm -hmm. I think it works so well in so many situations. For me, I really enjoyed it. I don't know how often I'm going to want to play it like as compared to the, the best games. That's it's an 8.49. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's really close. I really do like it though, a lot. That's really I'm also giving it an 8, opposite. actually. Um, I have a couple of issues with it. You mentioned the one with the symbols not matching. I mentioned the one with the track being feeling like the illusion of many, 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 many choices and many ways to draft and sort of seeming try hard. Um, I like everything else going on. The symbol matching. I love that when you take a new card, you can put it on top, or you can bury it and keep the bottom of a card. That's great. I like that setup. I like those games where you set up a sequence and then you score. 
Mm. There's a few games like that. This is an excellent game in that style. So, yeah, this is a fun game. Absolutely. I'm giving it an 8. It's so funny because this is more of like a Euro style game, but I love the theme so much in this. And I feel like the theme fits so good that I'm actually giving it an 8.5. Like, I really, really enjoy the way the game works and the way it feels like you're playing out of Trip to Japan. You can tell it's very well researched of like what a trip to Japan would be like. Mm -hmm. And these are the sort of places. I mean, to the point where I enjoy the theme so much that like, it's like, oh, go to the anime shop. It's like, I'm going to draft this like card, even though it's not necessarily good for my strategy because I want to go there, you know, which is weird for me to do in a game. Um, so my score might not even be as good because I'm like, this is how I actually want to plan out my trip sort of thing. Um, but I really, really enjoy this game. She didn't have a chance to beat you. I, I got uh, wrecked uh, when we played. When, when, I, when I, I look at the cards I'm drafting, like, you just draft Roy all the cards would want to go bad. there. So. <laughs> and I might actually draft match it. It's like, oh man, this is really cool. I don't know. I really enjoyed the way that the game works and the theme of it and everything behind it. And I just have a blast with it. And it's like, it's like Japan-themed Seven Wonders, you know, where you're drafting stuff and building up all your symbols. It's a lot of fun and I really enjoy Let's Go to Japan. On that note, I'm calling this will be, I think this is going to be a wild success. I think yeah, this is going to meet mm -hmm. a lot of people's enjoyment and I think that this will not be the only Let's Go. I bet you mm. we'll see Let's Go to other places too. Yeah. Mm. I might be wrong on that, but we'll see. But I, I'm very confident that this is going to be one of the more played games of this year. It's very yeah. playable. I think so. I it think is that's a game it, I yeah. myself am looking forward to playing more. It's very playable. I think if it feels more strategic, you kind of alluded to this earlier, strategic and heavier than it is, but it's that lightweight, comfortable game to get to the table once you know it. You're not having to relearn the rules right. each time, so it's going to be very comfortable yeah. to bring to the table. Yeah. There you go, folks. That's Let's Go to Japan. I'm Tom. I'm Camilla. I'm Roy. I'm Z. We're going to... No, we're not. Ah. We're going back to work. Oh, jeez. Oh,